This is an Eye on Annapolis bonus podcast. We're here at the Kent Island Yacht Club on the beautiful Kent Narrows. And I'm going to say it's probably one of the best views in the state of Maryland. And we are here with Mercy Morganfield, who is actually, I'm going to say you're a princess when it comes to jazz and blues music because you are a direct descendant of what I consider royalty, Muddy Waters. You're Muddy Waters' daughter, correct? Yes, I am. Oh, it's a pleasure to meet you, and I am a you know huge fan of the work of your father. Oh, okay. And uh, and I remember, I think I saw so many of your brothers at the Chesapeake Bay Blues Festival a couple of years ago. Right, yeah. The reason that we're here today talking with Mercy at the Ken Island Yacht Club is, uh, sadly, a little bit because the Chesapeake Bay Blues Festival hasn't been around last year because of COVID, and they couldn't get it off the start this year just because it takes so much planning. Mm-hmm. And that left a little bit of hole in the jazz genre here for Maryland, which we do love. And you're here to fill it, right? Yeah, not just fill it, but fill it on Kent Island. There's nothing wrong with that. You yeah. are bringing us the Jazz on the Narrows, which is a three-day jazz festival from August 13th through the 15th, which yes. is a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Mm-hmm. And you know, I was just walking around the property, and this is a perfect spot for a small jazz festival. Now, this yeah. let's preface this. This is not one of those big 10,000 people come on in and drink all the beer you can possibly drink and get sloppy drunk and, and, and everything else. This is a totally different type of a festival. And you've got some A-list talent that is booked up into here. Most people don't know. I don't know whether most people don't know. But Mercy Morganfield... Uh, and your father's name really wasn't Muddy Waters. That was a nickname. Yeah, that was a nickname his grandmother gave him. That stuck for... That stuck forever. You know, his his grandmother called him Muddy um, because they lived in the Mississippi Delta. Mm-hmm. Daddy was a sharecropper. And um, he would uh, go on the porch when he was a baby and play, in, play, play with mud pies, just like I did growing up in Mississippi, by the way. I grew up in Mississippi, and I remember making mud pies. Absolutely. Fantastic. That's, you know, because that's what little kids did in Mississippi. So his, his grandmother started calling him Muddy. And when he went to school, the kids put waters on there. So he always stayed Muddy Waters. He, it wasn't a stage name. It was a nickname from childhood. Did he ever change his name legally? I mean, or was he always, was he always, was he always McK- I guess, McKinley? He, he's he's Morganfield? McKinley Morganfield, okay. professionally known as PKA, are also known as, a.k.a. Muddy Waters. Okay. I learned a new acronym, PKA. I never- yeah, but, the, but, the, um, but Muddy Waters is, of course, trademarked sure. by our estate, and no one can use that name in, con- in, in, in conjunction with music except for us. Okay. Yeah. Well, I promise not to use it in conducting music because yeah, I, have, no, I have no musical yeah, ability don't, don't, whatsoever. Don't, don't try to play a guitar and name yourself Muddy Waters. That's all I ask. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, I'll tell you, tell me about this festival that you're bringing in. First of all, to go check out the lineup and to get tickets, which I recommend everybody do, you want to go to jazzonthenarrows.com. Com. Mm-hmm. And it has all of the information there. But this is a really unique festival. It's it's smaller than the big, large festivals, So it's very intimate. Yeah. Um, and the talent that you've got coming in, and it's what I was impressed with is that you've got what I would consider old school talent, mm-hmm. modern talent, mm-hmm. and upcoming talent. Yes. Uh, like, who's that? Oh, I just went to the YouTube page. That, I like that. Yeah. You know, so you, it's stuff that you don't know. And it's not it's not a gigantic lineup. Every day it's a fairly short festival, right? It's from 4 p.m. on Thursday and Friday. Well, it's, oh. a, it's, it's a short festival for y'all, for me and me and our planners. It's long. <laughs> but uh, but no, the um, it's uh, the first act. Go Every day there are three acts. So um, day one, Friday, doors open at 4. First act on at 5. We finish up about 10. Um, day two. For the adults, you know, or for not adults, for the for the paid ticket holders, doors open at four again until ten, and on Sunday it's a shorter, it's a it's an earlier day because people want to get back and get home and mm-hmm. get ready for work. Um, doors open at twelve, and we'll probably finish up around seven. Okay. So um, we also have a kids program on Saturday, which really made it longer, and it was very near and dear to. The promoters, all of us, everybody on the team, our hearts that we brought in some sort of jazz appreciation for children. Um, a lot of children, like for example, Ben Williams, who's on our who's on our li- in our lineup. He started at 11 years old. He didn't know what jazz was, and now he's won the Thelonious Monk Award 
for Best Jazz Harp. So we have um, a program for kids from 11 to 2 on Saturday, um, August 14th, that will feature the Annapolis Naval Jazz Band. Mm-hmm. That was yep, a yep. And um, the Bethesda Jazz and Blues Club. And we'll also have um, events and, and arts and crafts and things like that, as well as a kind of nightclub speakeasy for the older kids. So we're really giving them the vibe of jazz, the education and, and the education of jazz and putting it, doing it in a fun way. That event is free and open to the public. So that that event on Saturday from 11 to 2, it is the limited number of spots, so people have to register, but it's free and open to the public. Okay, you can register right on, on jazzonthenarrows.com yeah, as well. Yeah, you can register at Jazz on the Narrows. Narrows is N-A-R-R-O-W-S, because a lot of people right. don't realize that Narrows is a body of water. Um, but, but Jazz on the Narrows um, and um, Eventbrite. So, you know, like it, it'll take you into Eventbrite. So you can register for that event. But more than but but support jazz by also buying a ticket to the larger event. Sure. Well, it's funny. I know that you had said one point that to for youth that you need to bring youth and both in talent and exposure uh, to see it evolve. Mm-hmm. And what I've heard a lot of is people saying, oh, well, you know, not that, but let's keep the blues let's keep jazz alive Mm -hmm. and i so appreciate that you said evolve because it does evolve um it's you know today's blues or jazz is not your father's blues or jazz uh and it's you know tomorrow's is not going to be yours and it it is constantly evolving i mean you turn around and you look at you know the introduction to you know electric guitars and you've got Mm -hmm. you know and 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 whatnot so i i love that you use evolve because that's what it is and to get an appreciation of Jazz, which is, and we, before we started recording, we were talking a little bit about that was, you know, one of the fundamentals of all music that we've got today yeah. and is is beyond wonderful for the kids of you know, Anne Arundel County, Queen Anne's County and beyond where they want to come in here for this. Yeah. Kids don't, kids don't all, aren't always, I don't even know if it's taught in schools, American root music. American root music is a part of American history. And if you look at the root music of uh, American root music, it's blues, it's country, it's folk, it's classical, and all other musics derived from that. So it's at the root of the tree in America. And if you look at American music, it's all over the world. If you go to Egypt, they ser- they celebrate American music. So we don't we don't put enough emphasis on the fact that jazz is a derivative of the blues. Um, R&B is a derivative of the blues. Daddy said jazz had a baby and named it rock and roll. Rock and roll is definitely a derivative of the blues. Sure. When you start start looking at the arms, it helps the music to better evolve. It gets kids interested. Um, so, you know, I think we did a program with the Strathmore where we introduced American root music blues and they had a whole band and I was a part of, you know, helping out with that. But it was, um, it, it's very important that people know that this music needs to evolve because right now you have people belly aching that we need to keep the blues alive. Well, it will, it'll be alive if you allow it to evolve. Sure. It's not going to sound like Muddy Waters blues. It's not going to make people And it shouldn't. It, it's not going to make people appreciate Muddy Waters blues any less. But what you will allow it to do is evolve, allow um, younger musicians or or even older musicians that have a new take on the music to come in and allow this music to evolve. And jazz is doing that really well. Like if you look at some of our lineup, Anais Reno. Um, just is 17 years old, a prodigy. She sings the music of Ellington and Strayhorn, and she has this incredible old soul voice. And um, she was one of the first people I called because I wanted to make, and her mom was like, oh, my God, Muddy Waters' daughter is coming. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, oh, where, where, my where, God. Where, where, where's, the, where's the punk TV <laughs> right. show, right? I was, like, I was like, oh, my God, I'm so happy to get on East um, because she is one of the people that's evolving jazz. In her way, Cecile McLaurin Salvant, three-time Grammy award-winning. Every album she made has won a Grammy. 
So what does that tell you about she's won every award that there is. What does that tell you about her music? Um, she's she's an elegant singer. Um, people want to say she's like Ella Fitzgerald, but Ella Fitzgerald was like Ella Fitzgerald. Yeah. Cecile is like Cecile. And you got to see her to believe it. So, you know, we're, 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 we're really um, let, making sure people like Ben Williams. Um, ben Williams um, is a jazz harpist and, and um, the Emmett Cohen trio. Emmett Cohen was famous before he was 21 years old in the jazz world. A jazz harpist. Actually, sorry, jazz bass. Okay. Jazz bass. I'm wrong. Jazz bass. I was going to say this. Okay, so that's like the stand-up bass? The stand-up bass. I guess. Uh-huh. Oh, that's, yeah. That's... I'm thinking about somebody else with the harp, but the, the jazz bass. Yeah. Well, you know, you talk about you know, when you get the jazz, when you when it resonates with somebody. And I just recently spoke with the director of Annapolis Symphony Academy, which is designed to get kids involved in you know classical music as opposed to jazz or blues. And But he was just saying that you know, once you get them exposed, even at age four, you know, ankle biter height, mm-hmm. where they can sit there and, you know, maybe it's just tap in the music or something like that it's it plants this seed to allow it to evolve i mean it's talking about a different you know genre of music and i remember one time i was seeing a trombone shorty play at a, at a concert and he was he was up there doing his thing with his trombone and he was not quite as well known as he is right now but there was a, a, a super fan in the audience and he had this beat up old you know dented painted green trombone and he was sort of playing along with shorty mm-hmm. and he looks at Shorty looks out and says, oh, come on up and invite him up on stage. And, this, and, and we're all going, oh, this is a plant. This, this, this is just this is showmanship. I mean, this is what we're here for. Right. And the kid gets up there and they did a little duet and stuff like that. Then he kicked him off and he went down. And I happened to see the kid coming off the stage. Uh, he needed help getting off the stage because his knees were weak. Mm-hmm. And when he got down, he was crying. Aww. Okay, so that was legitimate. Yeah. And, you know, that's the passion that music can drive into people like that. Right. And I mean, you look, you've got Mindy A. Bear, you've got pieces of dream that are coming in here as well. Yeah. Mindy A. Bear with that, uh, you know, with that saxophone. And I think there's a song like Play Like a Girl that she does with Joe Bonamassa. And um, she is just, she, when you look at the list of people she's played with, it's prodigious. It's this long list. And um, just just making her way. The other thing that I like is that is showcasing women in the industry, women in the genre. We have two women, woman headliners, um, and it's a very male-dominated genre. But we made sure that we're showcasing every aspect of it. Well, I happen to notice on the website, again, jazzonthenarrows.com, that the team that's putting this on, obviously you're, you're leading it, is an, a very proudly all-female team. Yeah. Okay, so that means that all the details are going to be looked after, okay? If guys were planning that we would skip all sorts of things, we'd probably concentrate to make sure there was enough beer and, mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and other things could fall through the cracks. But I know that when you get a, a group of women, and, and certainly I know some of them that are on the team that are meticulous, uh, it, it is going to be a thing. I almost feel like out of place, or I should have sent somebody that was female to come talk with you. Well, <laughs> well you know, that, that's true, and it's not true. Um, all the details are being looked after because we we have Becky from Inspired Events. Yeah. <laughs> not because of me. Yeah. I am I am not a, de- you know, I'm kind of a visionary person, so I know that I have to, I have to bring in people and, and, and form a team of people who are going to not let anything slip through the cracks. But you know what? That's impossible with this type of event. There are going to be a lot of things slipping through the cracks. There are going to be a lot of mistakes. But a lot of people won't know if you don't tell them. So, uh, so we're, 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 we're going to keep our show faces on no matter what slips through the cracks. You know, it's so funny that you say that. I used to run a Cub Scout pack when my kid was you know knee high again. And they were always like... How do you pull this off without a hitch every single time? And I'm like, oh, there's hitches. I just don't tell you what the plan is. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> and you, have no, you have no idea how badly we messed what what the plan was yeah. as to what it actually worked out to. But you've got a couple different ticketing options here. And, again, jazzonthenarrows.com is where you go. But, I mean, you can buy a single-day ticket. So if you've, if you've got – if you're jazzed up, pardon the pun, for mm-hmm. one particular day, you can buy a single day ticket for yeah, like, like pieces of a dream. You know they've been around for forty years. Yeah. Do you know how many people have 
bought tickets for Saturday's Pieces of a Dream because people love them still. Um, we have a huge Caribbean population, and we have Dion Parson and 21st Century Band straight out of St. John and St. Thomas. And so you might not know them if you're here on Kent Island, but everybody in St. John and St. Thomas knows know who them. they are. So they're, they're buying tickets. And then we have Cesar Orozco, and Cesar is like... Um, Cuban, Venezuelan jazz. So you have a huge contingency who are like, oh my God, they have my type of jazz at this jazz concert. So you'll have people buy tickets. But I I urge people to buy a single day ticket is $75, which by the way, if you know the price of talent now, that's a, that's a deal and a steal. Oh no! For seventy five dollars, you know, um, it, when, when you um, if you buy a three day ticket, like j- go to Jazz Heaven and buy all three days, sure. and um, you will um, you'll get twenty five dollars off the general admission, and you'll get fifty dollars off the VIP. P admission. Now the VIP tickets are two hundred dollars, but it gets you a lot. It oh, gets yeah. you your food. It gets you alcohol. It gets you the VIP hospitality tent. It gets you the first meet and greet with the artist. Um, it gets you a T-shirt. It gets you um, entree into the cigar and bourbon tent if that's your thing. Um, it gets you a lot for two hundred dollars. So we wa- wanted to make sure that we 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 kept it where you know we kept a lot of cost low, but we we we're spending a lot of money on production because you cannot bring in artists like this without bringing in the right production crew and production manager, production stages, and everything that goes with production and sound. True, and and you also need to give the experience to to your guests. I need to give the I mean, the it's, best it's, possible it's, experience to our guests. So you know it. It's, it's a wonderful thing. You bring your you bring your blanket or your or your low lawn chair, and you sit out on the water, and you just hear jazz. And you know, jazz is a vibe. It's more than just music. It's a vibe. When I first started listening to it, I think it was Beta Fle- Bela Fleck like and the Fleck Tones Flecktone. and some other people. But I went for the vibe. I went because it made me feel grown up. You know, you mm-hmm. you put on your your cute outfit, you go out to the club, you sit there with your cocktail, and you listen to this music. And then before you know it, the music has seeped into you. And you're, you're playing it on your, at the time, iPod. So um, it's a vibe, and we wanted to create the best possible experience. That's why we have a cigar and bourbon tent. That's why we have a hospitality tent. Well, I was looking at your VIP, and the thing that stuck out for me that is always a winner in my thing is the uh, separate VIP air-conditioned restroom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 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 that's worth, yeah, that's yeah, worth the, every penny the, the, the of VIP. VIPs anyway. the have their own restroom. Uh, you know? I mean, the location couldn't be any more spectacular. Okay? Yeah, you, it, it, is. It, it may be warm. It's August. Okay. It's August. It's Maryland. It's summer. But you were just out there but with me, there, right? And there's a breeze coming there off is the a water. There's a guaranteed breeze yeah. coming off of the narrows. Yeah. And you're surrounded by yachts and boats, and you know, it's sexy. It is. And that's a sexy. You know, and, and I, I can imagine the. Uh, Folks at the the restaurants right across the channel uh, will be lining the bulkhead, lining the piers for those three days in August. We're really happy and proud to bring this to Kent Island. I'm new to Kent Island. Rebecca Groff from Inspired Events is working with me, partnering with me on this. She has been on Kent Island for a while. And, you know, we've been trying to get this type of caliber Concert, not that, that not that the other ones weren't great, but when you have nationally renowned no. um, artists and you have Grammy award winners, no, that's th- a different. This is, this is an international. Yeah, it's event. an international event, and to bring this to this side, it didn't stop in Annapolis. It, it's not going up to Rehoboth. It's here in Kent Island, which is the second most visited tourist attraction in Maryland in the summer outside of Ocean City. Really? And people don't realize that. No, I, I found that out from Gigi um, from the um, Narrows Foundation that this is the second most visited tourist attraction. And you can tell because you can't find any hotels. There well, are there, there are some hotels right here on Kent Island. And Annapolis is where I am from. And, I mean, that was a 20-minute like, drive. It's yeah, not like, very, quick, e- very quick drive, easy drive. Easton is probably, what, another 20 minutes, mm-hmm, 25 mm-hmm, minutes out. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, you can go a little bit further out if you want to fly into BWI. It's still it's not hard to get to. And there's free parking. Yeah, 45 minutes from D.C., 45 minutes from Baltimore, free parking. If this concert was being put on in D.C. proper... You would need to double or triple the ticket price. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. Can I bring my boat? 
If I have one? Yeah, you could bring your boat. There's a boat. There's going to be a boat fee, um, right. you know, to dock your boat, but for sure. So you've got boat access. We have you, a, you a lot. This is a, it's a yacht club. Right. So there's, I, I want to bring my boat if I can get it out of the uh, out of the marina sand and get all the plumbing fixed. I'd love to bring my boat and have it over here. But I have a I have a dedicated slip, yeah. but um, that we have slips for visitors. So absolutely, you can bring your boat. That probably is a great way to see this. You know, come from wherever you are by boat, mm-hmm. dock it up, yeah. come in and do VIP, hang out in the tent. Uh, yeah, I would uh, I would recommend if you really like jazz and you really like this experience, do it the VIP way. I go to every, and this is not just me trying to get more money in our, our pockets, because to be honest with you, once we've paid for the food, your food and your liquor, your <laughs> right, VIP right, ticket right, has right. paid for itself. Right. The best thing about VIP is you get this premium seating. You're right up front. It, it just has so many benefits. And my recommendation, I always do concerts VIP because music is an experience to me. It's worth paying for. Look, I'll pay less for clothes and pay more for music. I, I, I'm with you. I'll I, buy my clothes at Costco. I don't have any problem with that. <laughs> but, but, but I buy my concert tickets. But I buy at, my concert at, tickets at, premium. At Barney's or yes, exactly. whatever it may be. Exactly. Um, well, yeah, no, I mean, I agree. I totally agree with you. You get up there, you get the VIP. And another thing that really is interesting about the VIP is the, the meet and greet or the, the signatures mm-hmm. afterwards. And I know that a lot of jazz and blues concerts do that. That's sort of a signature and it's not so much with a lot of the rock and roll bands that you see. Mm-hmm. And to be able to get up there and get front and center with these folks to yeah. you know have a few words with them and get a picture, yeah. snap a selfie yeah. and get a... Uh, yeah, yeah. All, the, all that good stuff. I, I know because I grew up around music. And, right. and, I, and I could see what were good experiences and what were not so good experiences. Muddy's Daughter, LLC, which is my company, mm-hmm. we want to be known for creating some of the best music experiences people have ever gone to. Where else are you looking at creating experiences besides Kent Island? Well, we're um, probably going to um, St. Thomas this winter and St. John. Um, there are worse places to be. There are worse places to be. <laughs> um, but right now we're, um, we're partnering with the St. Thomas, St. John's Office of Tourism. And um, we're going to be bringing the same sort of thing over there. Um, we're, going to, we're hoping to make this a yearly thing on Kent Island. And we're going to expand genres. You know, it's jazz, blues. The one thing I found is I can kind of pick up the phone and get musicians on the phone from all walks. Um, interestingly enough, my dad's name does open doors in getting people on the phone. I have to do the rest. Sure. But like, um, you know, growing up, we grew up with uh, Mick Jagger, Keith Richards, Eric Clapton. These were people that were at our house. So, of course, if I call up their managers, you know, their managers will say, oh, yeah, let, let's we'll, we'll, we'll give you we'll give you an ear. Um, so that that's been very helpful. I was surprised that I was able to get such a remarkable jazz lineup with some of the top names in jazz. But that came from sheer persistence, calling, calling, calling back, calling sure. some more. And it came serendipitous because a lot of concerts are happening in the fall. They didn't want to book them for the summer because this is a lot of work. Mm-hmm. Um, we put this together in about a three-month span, and it all came together really well because everybody was available. And now that we know them, they'll be available again next year. And and other people who weren't available definitely want to play this concert next year. So we hope that you know everybody on the Eastern Shore is going to turn out and show us some love so that we can keep this on the Eastern Shore. I'm sure they will. Will we see the Rolling Stones here next year? Um, <laughs> not at this venue. Not at this venue. No, Keith, Keith and um, Keith and, and and Mick were in Chicago right before the the COVID, COVID shutdown, right. and they were going to do a tribute to Dad. We were we were in touch with their manager, but you know those guys still they still practice together. They still you know they still do everything that they always did. You so know, I, I love to see one thing that I love about and I'll say old music and that's not the right term but when you see an art, an artist that has the staying power to go decades and decades and decades i mean you go to the stones you look at you know you can look at springsteen and certainly you know your father if he was still with us today you know would you know i mean you know how long did fast domino and chubby checker and you know all these guys go um and when you have that staying power over generations and generations the grateful dead is another example i mm-hmm. you know you go to a concert and you see i can see a 70 year old man Grooving right next to his fifty-year-old daughter, mm-hmm. who has her twenty-one-year-old daughter mm-hmm. 
with a three year old. Right. You know, you got four generations all just grew up into a song. Right. And it gets into your it gets in and so cool when you've got an artist that has that staying power that can do that. The Stones are certainly one of them and I, I argue that Madonna is yeah, because no, no that, that's not an argument. You know, she certainly she is. came she came in the scene in the early eighties and there's not been a day that she hasn't been relevant. Mm-hmm. To today, mm-hmm. uh, but there's so many that are just a flash in the pan. It's like, okay, boom. Oh yeah, that's right. They had they had a couple records. You no, know, I think Gary Clark Jr. is going to be one of those people. I think you know you can you can you can kind of pick out who if they stay here with us will be those people. And there's no secret. Like you know, Keith Richards would show up because he wanted to learn to play the electric guitar like Muddy Waters. And when they named their 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 group the Rolling Stones, that came off of one of Daddy's songs. I, I am a Rolling Stone, yeah. Okay. So, um, so they, they they showed up. They would show up at our door, but they would show up and they would watch him. If you go to this PBS special, special where they have Daddy and the Rolling Stones on stage together, you watch Keith watching Daddy intently. He's like, "I'm going to get that. I'm going to do that." And it's, it's just like um, Malcolm Gladwell said: it's practice, 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 practice. So, Daddy started with the harmonica when he was like six or seven years old. So when you bring your kids to a concert, you never know what doors that's going to open up for them. We had this thing that we did with Jim Brown, who was a movie producer for PBS, where we gave kids, all these kids, a harmonica and taught them the riff, da na 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 from Manish right. Boy, right? Okay. Those kids were so happy with those harmonicas, and they, and they weren't just trying to make noise. They were really trying to do it. So... Introduce your children to music early because you never, it opens up, I call it the universal language that opens up all of creativity. It might make them become a musician. It might make them become an artist. It might make them be more creative in business. But introduce them early. It is a universal language. You're absolutely, universal absolutely language. right on that. Yeah. That's, uh, that's for sure. Jazzonthenarrows.com is where you want to go to get tickets. We're here with Mercy Morganfield, who is Muddy Water's daughter. She is bringing this concert to Kent Island at the Kent Island Yacht Club on August 13th, 14th, and 15th. It's a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Doors open at her gates. Gates, doors. Gates, because there are no doors. Barriers, whatever, whatever yeah. you want to call it. Something we'll, opens up at 4 o'clock. We'll let you in <laughs> at 4. <laughs> we'll let you in at 4 o'clock on Friday and Saturday and noon on Sunday so you can hit church on the morning. Mm-hmm. And you can get out at reasonably hours so you can, you're can you not useless at work on a Monday. Right. But you will have some good memories when you come back. When you uh, look at the lineup that you've got, you know, Cecile McLaurin, Salvant, uh, Pieces of a Dream. This is, you know, the VIP experience is going to be great if you... You know, I do recommend that you roll that way. Uh, I'm a fan of the bathroom. Uh, <laughs> but there's an awful lot more that goes in there. And I'm really looking forward to coming out here onto Kent Island and uh, and seeing this. I can't imagine a better location and the lineup. And actually, I'm even a little bit more excited to see what you have in store for next year. Yeah. Um, yeah. We'll now, come out this year because we, you know, this year is going to dictate next year. If this year does well, and, and I don't, like, like for example, as a promoter, we're not going to make a lot of money uh, off the, off a first year concert. I, I just want a nice outfit out of it. But um, next year, you know, the the more we do it, the more people are going to hear about it, and the more people are going to come. So our recommendation is come on out um, this year. This year is. I don't know that we're going to be able to have this much of an astounding lineup next year. I hope we will. But this year it kind of fell in our lap because we were first out of the gate right after COVID. And again, you've also got a full year to plan next year. Yeah, I do. When you're at jazzonthenarrows.com and ultimately get through to Eventbrite, you also have a uh, raffle with PRS Guitars, right? Yeah, we do. Yeah. Is that up on Eventbrite now? It's on Eventbrite, yeah. Okay, cool beans. But yeah, you can get a chance at winning a uh, PRS SE Custom, and it is signed by Paul Reed Smith. Yeah, we have a raffle with PRS Guitars. They were one of our sponsors. Um, And we're hoping to have a wine tasting with Mindy A. Bear, so that should go up pretty soon as well. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, a little bit of a teaser. She, she, well, she, yeah, she and her husband own a wine um, a wine club, and um, I'm like, well... I think some Mindy A. Bear fans would love to come and, sip some wine with and you. sip some wine with her. But that's a VIP ticket that will give you access to that. Yeah, You know, I'll, I'll tell you, it, Mercy, it's been great talking to you. It's great to meet you. Uh, I do feel like I'm sitting here like in jazz royalty. I mean, I think this is uh, this is fantastic. And 
Jazz on the Narrows is where you want to go. Get your tickets. You can go to Eventbrite and search Jazz on the Narrows. That'll mm-hmm. bring you to it as well. Uh, but I do recommend going to the website. See everything that's offered there. I'm particularly interested in the uh, the kids program on Saturday morning. We have Facebook and Instagram, too. So we have all kind of ways to get in touch with us. Okay, fantastic. Okay. Mercy, thank you very much. Thank you, John, for having me. This has been a bonus podcast from Eye on Annapolis. Please visit us at ionanapolis.net. Follow us on Facebook at All Annapolis and on Twitter at Eye on Annapolis. And if you haven't subscribed to the Daily News Brief podcast, go for it. And all of your local news will be delivered to your phone, tablet, or smart device by 6 a.m. every Monday through Friday.